three, two, one. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Ash on Comics. My name's Ash, and uh, today we've got a doozy of a comic to go over. Um, if you're new to the channel, this whole the whole spiel of what my my gig is is I'm just a schmo. I talk about comics. Uh, I read comics. I love comics, um, but I also hate bad comics. And so sometimes I talk crap and I ridicule and mock and you know just say <laughs> be negative about bad comics. But I'm also very passionate about good comics. I want I want to find the best of the best. And when I read a really good comic, I just want to share it and I want to talk to you about it. And I don't present this channel. You should not watch these videos as any sort of professional comic video. There's so many people out there doing really professional, edited, scripted content and so forth. The way I uh, present myself to you is uh, more of a conversational. It's very off the cuff uh, as a way of, you know, just if we were in the comic book shop, you know, and talking about comics that we like and what we don't like and things like that. Just shooting the shit, so to speak. Um, it's designed to be a little bit like talk radio. Um, and so that's the way that it is. I don't require much visual, um, on my videos. So I encourage you to, if you, if you like listening to these at all, treat it like a podcast, you know, put it down, you know, listen to it while you're, you're on the way to work, doing the dishes, uh, doing whatever you're doing, you know, uh, in, in your time that you just want to eat up space with, uh, with noise. <laughs> I'll be that noise. So, Event Leviathan. This is not a good book. Um, it's it's pretty terrible. I don't remember if I did uh, even a video on issue five because this is so forgettable. But to be fair, though, I honestly did rate the first couple of issues of this positively. I think I gave issues one and two four stars. Even it started off pretty strong. Um, and Bendis is really good at that. He's really good, when he tries, that is, at opening a story and getting you to feel like he's going to get deliver the goods. And that's probably why, in hindsight, where he is where he is today, because he, he's, I hear, and I've heard this, you know, that he's a really good pitch man. When he, when he gets in the, the editor's room, whatever, and he's, and he's pitching his stories, they all sound great. And it, it, I, this is just what I've heard. And it makes sense, because... He starts off things great. When he came to DC, um, and this is all documented, I, you can go watch my videos. I I defended Bendis. Everyone was big naysayers. Oh, Bendis is coming. It's going to ruin DC. And uh, I was doing videos on his books, and I was praising them. And I was backing up my praise with real, um, you know, real information, like reasons why these books were good, not just because I was drinking the Kool-Aid. But then issue six came and it was all, you know, just pulled the rug out from under you. Didn't really end the story. Just Supergirl shows up out of nowhere with total deus ex machina move and, uh, you know, wraps it up. Basically starting off what would become a trope in Bendis uh, Superman culture or his uh, culture, I don't know if it's culture, but, you know, in, in the way he does things with never letting Superman actually do anything. He never once saves the day. Think about this. Superman, the, the guy, the comic character most known for saving the day, has yet to once save the day in his own book. Not in Man of Steel, not in Superman, not in Action Comics, and not here in Event Leviathan either. Superman, time and time again, is upstaged by secondary characters that have to do his job for him while he just looks on. And it happens in a way that's not even sensical to the plot. And I can say this, you know, with all conviction because there is no plot. Bendis has yet to write a story that has a plot. I don't think Bendis understands what a three-act structure is. And this is shameful because this is a guy who apparently taught at university how to write. He was a writing teacher. This is a man that I'm convinced doesn't sit down and outline a plot or think about the three-act structure. This is a man I'm convinced sits down, maybe on the toilet for a long bio break, 
to type out whatever just comes to his mind. Um, and this is a very amateur way to write. This is the way that I used to write when I first started when I was a kid and then I got into high school and fortunately I was at an English magnet school and I got to take uh, two different creative writing English courses. Um, I'm very terrible at English. It's one of my, it's my worst subject. Um, but I ended up taking five years of English uh, because I took um, two creative writing classes that I didn't need to. Um, anyway, so you don't care about that. But I learned a lot. Uh, whether I'm able to execute what I learned is besides the point. Obviously, I'm not a big professional writer. Obviously, I'm not Brian Michael Bendis. But I learned a lot to recognize what's good and what's bad. I also learned some basic fundamentals of which Bendis has yet to display. Event Leviathan started off as, I don't even know, it came at four or five issue prelude in Action Comics, Leviathan Rising. Those were $4 a piece. Then you had a $10 Leviathan special at one shot book. Then you had these books, which uh, are four to $5. I can't remember the price. Um, where they're telling the story, who's Leviathan? This whole thing, all of this, all these issues, all together, all culminate to this issue, to this title right here, The Man Behind the Mask Revealed. That is all that happens. I shit you not. Let's get into the book. When we last left off, I, as I said, I didn't cover issue five. Um, this, the heroes were all sitting around talking who they thought... Um, who they thought Leviathan was. No one knows. They're all suspicious of each other. Doesn't make any sense. They're just pointing fingers at each other because of this artificial suspicion that Bendis just sort of writes into his story, but doesn't actually make you believe there's any real reason for these characters to feel this way. Um, and none of these characters really could be. I mean, some people think it's Lois Lane is, is Leviathan. It's like, come on, you know, um, Robin thinks it's the Red Hood. And it's quite obvious that every single person that these characters suspects is, uh, is not going to be... It's, 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 it's like a cheap... It's not even a real red herring. It's, it's, a, it's a wannabe red herring. Like, like oh, I'm going to fool... Oh, man, I really thought it was Red Hood because Robin, little Damian Wayne, was a cute... No. None of them would make sense. Who would make sense as Manhunter? No one. Literally, no one makes sense. The guy that actually turns out to be Manhunter, he doesn't make sense either. We start off the book. You don't know what a Manhunter is? Doesn't matter. Manhunter is Leviathan, and we let him take the world. That sums up this whole thing. You don't know what a Manhunter is? Question mark. Doesn't matter. Yep, it doesn't matter. Nothing in this book matters. We start off with... Lois, hot on, the, hot on the case, writing, going through notes, doing something I don't know because the art's not good enough to convey. She remembers holding her father, who's dead. She sheds a tear. Green Arrow runs in. Barely recognizable the first time I read this book. Um, I was like, who's this guy? I just thought it was some random person. I didn't know that was Green Arrow. It's a little obvious when I blow it up and look at it closely, but... When it's just quick, it's just the art is so bad that you're just like, oh. And then later on, you'll see. I was like, oh, that was Green Arrow. Lois Lane, there you are. Go. I only talk to my husband. No one else. Um, but Leviathan. <laughs> I'm here, Lois. Superman darts in the room. Jeez. Lois immediately embraces him and they start kissing. <laughs> okay. Ollie, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Are you okay? Could you give my wife and me a minute? Sure, sure. They hug. Well, my father is gone. I know. Leviathan was trying to turn him. But when they saw they couldn't, they did him in front of me. Your father was a complicated man. But even in his last breath, a good one. That isn't going to do it for me today, Smallville. Tell me about Manhunters. Gotham City, three hours ago. This whole book is told in like series of flashbacks 
we don't ever get to see a story unfold. We just get to sort of see the story cracked open like an egg and the, you know, the, the, the yolk and the white just kind of ooze out, you know, like, oh, it's, it's like opening a present. What's inside? Oh, it's this. Here we see, you know, a car crash and we see Manhunter, this girl. I'm Manhunter, Talia al Ghul. I know, darling. That's why I took a bazooka to your ride. And as delighted as we all are for you, Miss Spencer, put down the Manhunter staff and unhook your battle armor before I have Silencer here remove your brain from your head. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. When was Silencer working for Talia al Ghul? Wasn't the whole point? She's just now a Talia al Ghul goon. Nothing matters. When Bendis is involved, nothing matters anymore. Oh, sure, no problem, she says. Meanwhile, Batman and Robin climb out of the vehicle. Hey, look, everyone, it's more terrorists. Wait, is that Batman? I can't tell. You literally can't tell. Because the art is so bad. I think it's Batman, because he's right there. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's Green Arrow wearing all black. Who knows? Hey, look, everyone, it's more terrorists, he says. I guess it's more fitting of a Green Arrow line. Did you bring any snacks, Mom? No, she just brought a bazooka to which she shot at the vehicle you were riding in. Her own son driving in a... Your mom just shot you with a bazooka and you climb out of the wreckage saying, Did you bring any snacks, Mom? Batman says, What do you have to offer to the proceedings, Talia? She has a bazooka. She just shot you with a bazooka, Batman. <laughs> Hi, Damien, sweetie, Talia al Ghul says. Let me remind you, Talia al Ghul is the head of the League of Assassins. She is the head of Leviathan, really, before Leviathan became this new Brendis Leviathan. She says, Hi, Damien, sweetie. Catherine Spencer, would you please hand your Manhunter staff to my son now? This is a nightmare. Wait, are you really his mom? Ugh! The, the Bendis speak is insufferable. Just, it, you're trying to have this serious scene and you get these under your breath quips that the, uh, there's a time when you do that and a time when you don't. And Bendis does it all the time. Then Batman engages this super computer tech that can do anything. It's complete miracle technology. Computer. Full scan, cross-reference with the Fortress of Solitude and the Hall of Justice. This is staff broad is this staff broadcasting any kind of transmission or feed? Cross-reference, intergalactic and interdimensional. Even something you can't categorize. <laughs> what? What? To which the computer responds, inconclusive. Manhunter says, I told you, it's not about my Can you show us a skeletal scan of the the Manhunter pendant? Signal is corrupting the scan. Uh, so she looks. Talia says, A manhunter, a damn manhunter, stole my world. Does that mean that? And, and manhunter looks, No, I have a son. I shouldn't. Oh my god, I shouldn't be here. Superman says, off camera, What is a manhunter? Fair question. Not everybody knows. Damn straight. But how many issues are we in? 10? 10 issues? I, I can't even keep track. It's got to be at least 10, 11 issues. Still no one knows what a Manhunter is because Bendis doesn't know how to tell a story. Now we get Superman exposit expositing over the actual scene. So Manhunter says, fuck it. She starts kicking ass on the, all the detectives. Superman exposits over. Manhunters were basically the original Green Lanterns. They were the first attempt to create organized guardians of the universe. In their day, they liberated entire planets. They grew fo followings with across the galaxy, blah bitty blah bitty blah bitty, yada yada yada. Um, and finally, Talia al Ghul just uses a taser to bring her down. Yes, a fucking taser. <sighs> Don't you take a swing at me. I am the League of Fucking Shadows, she says. Oh, brother. God. But Bendis can't stop talking through Superman's mouth, so he keeps talking 
about manhunters came to the Earth for the same reason they came to every planet. To liberate it. Blah 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 blah. More talking over the scenes. Non-stop. Talking, 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 talking. And then we get to this, one of the most ridiculous scenes I've ever seen. Batman. Remember, there's two things going on. There's Superman narrating to you, the audience, exposition about who Manhunters are, and it's two pages. Meanwhile, you're viewing, um, you're you're viewing the the comic and the events that's going on. And Batman, and you know, they just took down Manhunter. He starts talking to Robin. I think we're better off going to the Batcave and waiting for Superman's return. In quotes, I think you're right, Batman says Robin. And then they're doing like sign language. Detectives, if you know sign language, follow along. Erwin Manhunter, can you help Robin load the van, right? This is a very dangerous situation. We are being observed. Tell us the plan, Batman. This is all in sign language. And then you get to this two page spread <laughs> of ridiculous. Look at, first of all, look at what what's up with the pink and purple hue back non-background it's just like this purplish pinkish effervescent spray painted background there's and these characters are just every single one of them everyone could conveniently they all know sign language and they're all talking in sign language and you know who's talking to who only because they use different colors which creates a wonderful rainbow of just cringeworthy dialogue that is uh, Meanwhile, the other detectives show up, which include people like Lois Lane, Zatanna, Deathstroke, um, the the other question, <laughs> just uh, oh yeah, and Bullock. <laughs> what a stupid! What? I guess he he is a literal detective. Uh, oh, and Constantine, I think, is part of it. And they show up with the body of Plastic Man, and Talia point Talia and Silencer point their weapons at him. Would you be so kind as to lower your weapons? Bullock responds, pointing his weapon. Nope, because you're under arrest, terrorist lady. Talia al Ghul and Lois Lane working together? Weird night, says Deadpool. I mean, dead. Uh, wait, I mean, Deathstroke. Bullock responds, says weird Deathstroke. Oh, jeez. Damien replies, cops. Batman says, I hate to bother you, Zatanna, but we're out of time. Zatanna responds, no worries. And then she does her magic hubba da blub and they make some things. And we go back to Superman talking to his wife. And uh, she wants to know, um, you know, who Leviathan is. Because Superman's the only person still who's seen Leviathan's face. Um, tell me you saw Leviathan's face. I did. Definitively, so I can publish it, I looked him right in the eye. On the beach of Leviathan Island. Plastic Man lay limp in my hands. Don't write it. Just tell me. I'm sorry. I don't recognize you, says Superman to uh, Leviathan. <laughs> so he's now he's... You're actually seeing the story he's telling to Lo Lois at this point. Leviathan has removed his mask. My name is Mark Shaw, Manhunter. And I know I said it before, but thank you. Thank you for all the times you saved my life, and I don't even know about it. You have saved my life and the lives of everyone on, on this island hundreds of times. I believe I speak for everyone today when I say that nobody here wants to fight you, Superman. We've been over backward not to fight with you. Our scientists have tried everything. We want to convince you to take the next steps with us. What just happened to Sam Lane was unfortunate. L Lois, we're back in reality now. He said, what? Back to the flashback scene. I know you and Sam were hardly close. And I know very well how you and he felt when you, about you in the abstract. <laughs> Wait, this, this, even though we both knew he was a big bastard who wanted to gut you for sport, he did go out the way he wanted. <laughs> Lois says, hold, hold on, I have to rewrite my open. Mark Shaw, ex-spy, of course. Manhunter, ex-suicide squad. Lois says, of course. Superman, he was checkmate when it collapsed. Talia recruited him into Leviathan, not knowing. Uh, so no one knows who this character is. So this whole book is explaining who this character is so that you can be impressed at the amazing ta-da reveal that Bendis gave us. 
Ta-da! Bendis gave us a nobody character that you could never have guessed was Leviathan. You never cared as Leviathan, and when you find out he is Leviathan, you still don't care. And speaking of not caring, look at this panel right here of Superman. What happened to this S on his chest? Now look, I know that Bendis is not edited. Right? That was the big deal when he came over to DC. He literally bragged about how he would not be edited, and then he had full control over Superman. That's not a thing you should brag about. That's that's a sign of poor comics. But can you edit the art? Does that carry over to the art too? You can't even... Can someone tell... Can, can you not tell... How is this acceptable in AAA comics? So, Superman tells him the whole story about how he faced off, da-da-da-da, and this two-page picture here, which is pretty to look at, I gotta say, mostly because the colorist uh, does a fantastic job. There's That's the action of the book. Here, he, Oh, look, everyone showed up and faced off. The island shook. That is the action of the book. Um, sorry, there was another page here of some things. Uh, Batman, Batgirl made her move from the inside. We were able to extract her. It's all exposition. The whole story here is not Bendis showing, it's Bendis telling. This is just him making up a, you know, obviously it's a fictional story, it's all fake, but instead of playing it out in a cinematic way, the way comics are designed to do, it's just him, it's almost like him doing what I'm exactly doing right now and just telling you what, what happened in the book. So, geez, dog. Now my dog, my dog just decided to start playing and making noise right now, of all times. Um, finally, Leviathan's had it, because he was trying to do good, and he says, I can't believe it. All you've done is reveal yourself today, he says to the heroes. Your truth is you want this. You're fighting to keep things the way they are. Well, fuck you, Superman. I'm assuming he says that, because it's got the curse symbols. I don't know what else he... I, I don't know, I, hate, I hate the modern progressives. You know, they're... <sighs> we see to see Leviathan ascend. Where's Leviathan now? Says Lois. Superman responds. He was ready for us, for any contingency. Batman storms in. Of course he was. Leviathan, raised triumphant. Ha ha ha! Supervillain, you can't stop me. And then, he's gone. And Batgirl says, God. Fucking, I don't know what she's cursing. Damn it. So close. But but Leviathan had a next phase. What's the next phase? How do we stop it? Secrets. So they didn't get Leviathan. They got both the groups of detectives. They got Superman. They got Batman. Leviathan just gets away. What do we do? So the whole thing is, well, he's trying to reveal the secrets of the world. And essentially... Who Leviathan is in a, in a real-world analog, he's Julian Assange. He's WikiLeaks. They just turned him into a supervillain. He wants the world to be transparent, which I don't actually think is a bad thing. Bendis doesn't do a good job selling me on how villainous Leviathan actually is. He's taking out all these, you know, different spy agencies that are doing some pretty nefarious things, to be quite honest. Amanda Waller is not a good person. Um, he's taking out all these spies, he's all these secrets, he's erasing the corruption of government, he, and he needs to do it simultaneously. That's his big plan. And actually, there is an idea in there. The, the idea that he, he needs to do it all simultaneously because they point out if he only succeeds in part of his plan, then all the other agencies that he fails to, to reveal their secrets just become that much more powerful in the vacuum. Um, so we get some sort of dialogue from Silencer and she's like, I've been watching Leviathan since this all started. And I think, I think I know a real way to turn this. No, stop, says Lois Lane. That's not the story. So she just interrupts Silencer and what she was saying. And you want to know more of what Silencer saying? Cause it's actually one of the only interesting things in the book. And Lois Lane interrupts her and says, no, that's not the story. You're right. It's not the story. Um, the story is Lois Lane getting the scoop. And here we see on this massive word salad page, 
um, Lois Lane, she's talking to Perry White and he explains all the stuff that they've figured out and he's trying to do that. And the way to stop Leviathan, well, not stop Leviathan, but stop his plan is to just expose it through the Daily Planet. Yep, write a news article. It's three paragraphs long. Um, it's it's basically a tweet. Yes, it's it's basically a tweet. She she defeats the villain's plan with a tweet by revealing that oh he's really this guy, who no one knows. What so doesn't matter. Then we get an epilogue. Choke on it, Marky says. Lois Lane's voiceover as he's looking on his virtual iPad thingy reading the article then his henchman comes up everyone is still with you everyone now so more than ever the bigger heads have tons of new ideas they want to try they said this opens more doors for us than you think thank you Mr. Harper you've gotten us this us very far very fast don't be too hard on yourself I just wanted to believe in Superman and I wanted him to believe in us. That's exactly how Superman's fans feel. I just wanted to believe in Superman, but I can't because Bendis is ruining him. Oh, I know that feeling. Guess we'll just have to believe in ourselves. They would rather burn... They would rather I burn this all to the ground than try to fix it. Yes. Fine. And so, essentially... It's going to be continued in Action Comics 1018 in Leviathan Dawn number one. <laughs> the end. So all of this, all of this was a complete waste of time to birth a supervillain. Do you see what happened here? We had a big prelude in Action Comics that led up to nothing. Right? We had the Leviathan Rising that just had a bunch of weird events happening and Superman was totally ineffectual in the stopping or figuring out anything. Then they had the big prologue one-shot book where some more events happen and then, then they formed the big super detective squad. Then that's what this book was. The detective squad sitting around for six freaking issues talking about who I think it's this guy. I think it's this guy. No, it's probably this guy. What could they be doing? I don't know. Did you get a look at him? I haven't seen him. Who could Leviathan be? I think it's you. No, I think it's you. Blah, 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 blah. For six freaking issues until finally ta-da it's this guy no one's ever heard of and uh he's actually not really that big of a bad guy um but we're just gonna make it because the plot says so and um because no one believes in him uh and they expose him now he's actually gonna really turn evil and go against his moral compass this is stupid this is retarded um <laughs> speaking of retarded Here's the look at the new Green Lantern. Aren't you excited? Yeah, so excited. Um, anyways, this went on way too long, like it usually does. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my boy Wes at Thinking Critical. He did a video uh, on this book. It's much more concise and tight than mine. Uh, it's because he scripts it, and uh, he puts a lot of work into his videos, a lot of work, and it shows why he's just got a successful channel. And I had a blast listening to his video. If you've read this book, or actually now that you've seen my video, even if you haven't, the one thing Wes doesn't really do is show you a lot of the book. Um, I kind of go more into detail to actually show you. Not that I don't believe Wes's opinions or anything like that, or anyone else's, but sometimes you just have to see for yourself how something is and not just rely on someone saying, this was stupid, and say, well, I take your word for it, but I can, you can see it for yourself. Wes does a great review, was super entertaining, and man, if you like rants, this one was a rant for the ages. Bravo, Wes, if you're listening, I don't know if you are, because my videos are so long, you don't have much time, but A+, plus, you really, man, you got a smile out of me, and that was a ton of entertainment. For the rest of you guys listening, I hope I was able to bring a, a, a portion, just a tenth of that entertainment that Wes gave me to you, and I hope I saved you any money. Do not, please, for the love of the God, if you are waiting for the trade for this, skip it. But do not waste your money on this trash. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.